Pack now it's Pesci. Over the line on Ryan Suter. Williams, a hole, a shot, he scores! Hey, hey, what do you say? Sebastian Ajo, the Hurricanes win in overtime. Hey, hey, what do you say? We break this down. Okay, so for those of you who don't follow me on Instagram, I dropped a question there yesterday to see if anyone would be interested if I did a breakdown of the retouch on this. And I got so many positive messages back that I couldn't not do it, so here I am. Also, as you can see, I've got a print of the image. I printed some stuff the other day of our new puppy from my last video about tethering, and it just reminded me how nice a tangible print can be. We get so used to just flipping through images on a screen that I thought, you know, why not print one of these? And now that I've printed it, I thought, why not give it away? So if you're interested in this print of Sebastian Ajo of the Carolina Hurricanes, all you have to do is follow me here on YouTube and drop a comment below. In that comment, please leave your Instagram or Twitter address so I can reach out to you if you win. And make sure you're following me on those two platforms as well so I can DM you to get your address. I uh, figured I'd leave this open until midnight, April 20th, which is next Monday, I believe. And to add, I don't have much of a following here, so if you put your name below, you probably have a pretty decent chance to walk away with this guy. Okay, so let's get down to it. Just a little background on the image. The Hurricanes had me in last fall to photograph their players prior to last season, or I guess what should be the current season, but we all know what's going on there. So one of the setups I like to do is to get the guys into a position they would be in during a game. This applies to all the sports I photograph. So for this particular example, we went with what could be a pre-face-off stance. Aho will take face-offs during the game, so it just made sense to have him pose in this fashion. To further enhance the drama of these types of situations, I like to take the image um, from as low an angle as possible, which gives that larger than life perspective of the player. So let's take a look at where I go from there. Okay, so I'd like to think that the foundation for any of these Im images is just a fantastic image to start with. So here we have the full image of Aho and his stance, um, you know, pre-face-off, as I mentioned below. And let's go up here to history. What I did is, is did the, use the crop tool to kind of show the, the full raw image. And this has been pulled out of camera raw, so I've done some tweaking here. And uh, at the shoot, we shot on some uh, rubber flooring uh, since the guys are on skates, and then I had a black backdrop behind the guys, so um, we can pull them out easier, uh, you know, having that for um, selections. All right, anyway, so we'll go back up here. You'll see for this image, I came in and kind of made the crop right about here, and these stripes are on those legs. Um, any of you that have composited before know things are easier if you don't have to include uh, the player's feet. And so for this one, I didn't have, I had some access to the ice, but not on the ice. So I didn't, I couldn't really get the exact angles that I would need to make something like this work. So I had to do, you know, the next best thing, which is um, bring a crop in down here. Let me show you the selection. So I've got him selected out here. And, and then, like I said, I was able to um, get in the arena and uh, this was probably between setups that we had and I was able to kind of walk out um, to the ice. Luckily for me, they were just kind of running some graphics on the scoreboard. So I was able to kind of time some of my shots and get some of their graphics up here. So this is the, uh, the arena background and you can kind of see I'm working the same angle. Um, since I'm down here at a low position, I'm, I'm looking up at him and so naturally behind him would be um, more of the roof of the arena which helps with the scoreboard and that type of thing. So let me go over here and we can kind of, I'll show you. You know, I took a nice wide angle um, shot so you can kind of see I had plenty of options when it came to uh, 
you know, making the, the layout choices. Also, when I'm doing this, I will try to stop my camera down. Uh, I don't have the info right here, but this is probably F11 or, or more. You get um, just nicer flares the further you stop your camera down. Um, you get these nice um, flares coming off of these lights. So that's something I always try to do is um, bring my camera down to a smaller f-stop um, for this effect here. All right, so let me cancel that out and reset that. So from there, what you can also do with these backgrounds, you have plenty of options um, for this to actually make sense. For him to come out from the background, I usually throw a blur on this background. And just by doing that, you can see he comes forward in the image. So that's with the blur, and then that's without the blur. With, without, see, without the blur, he kind of um, blends into the background, and then you blur, and then he kind of brings him forward. Uh, so uh, it didn't make sense. Sometimes if, if I've got the player uh, in motion, then I'll throw a motion blur back here. Uh, but so with him just in his stance, it doesn't really make sense to throw motion on there. So this is probably just a, and I, usually when I do these, let me go up here. Uh, I will usually kind of go in here to the um, blur gallery and do like a field blur for these. All right, so the rest of it is just adding atmosphere. So this is, as far as compositing goes, this is fairly simple, just a player and a background. Um, I added some, some darkness here, just painted this in basically uh, behind him. Uh, you know, it's mainly to cover up all the empty seats here. I do have files of fans and that type of thing, but for this one, I just wanted to, uh, instead of painting in fans um, from another stadium and then having to color correct and all that, I just darkened that down. And I brought in another one here to kind of bring uh, down the roof, these sides here, which further brings him forward in the image. So we can kind of see what that does. Then right here, I'm taking out this news, any kind of lettering that you don't want to draw attention. It's a smart thing to uh, kind of take that out. I left it in a little bit where you can kind of see it. And these banners I left in here too. And then so now we, we've pretty much covered the uh, background. And so now we move to treatment on the player himself. And so this is a, a dodge and burn layer which is set to uh, soft light. Let me take it up to normal so you can kind of see what I've done here. So basically on this 50% gray layer, I will come in and paint highlights and shadows. So this will kind of give you a, a blend look. So you can kind of see I come in here, work the uniform a little bit. All this adds dimension right here on the flags, the hurricane flags. His face, I brought in some highlights there on his eye and his cheekbone, uh, neck, a little bit of work on his helmet. Uh, and then, you know, kind of enhanced the rim lighting, like so, and then the rim lighting up here and the folds in his jersey. And so we'll take that back to 100%. You can see that again. Oops, let me take this back. So I'll put that as soft light. Overlay is a little bit stronger Depending on the image, um, you can use overlay, but I prefer um, soft light. And then what I'll do is I will uh, copy that layer. And usually I will drop the opacity here. This is 60%, whereas you know this one's 100. So this is 60%. And then I will usually throw like a blur on this uh, layer. And I probably did like a 12 pixel blur. So that will kind of spread these pixels out a little bit so it's not um, going kind of just exactly over what I painted here. So it kind of spreads out that effect and makes it a little more subtle. So that kind of covers the, uh, the you know, kind of the dodge and burn or carving layers, as you would say. Um, down here, I felt like I needed a little something going on, so I brought in some smoke. Now these smoke files, you can find these online. I, personally, I've used some online before, but what I've done, is just rig up a smoke machine with a black background and just run smoke across the black background uh, and just taking pictures, uh, just files and files of, of smoke and, um, and just built up a library. I've also done that with grass and rocks and sand and just um, all kinds of um, different elements, as I call it. 
And so then I have these files that I can go in and when I need smoke like for an image like this, I can just go in there and um, grab what I you know, think might look um, fitting for that image. And so these smoke layers, this is a screen um, blend mode. You can see it here, normal. Uh, I mean, it just it, you use these blending mo modes. If you've got a black background, it makes things uh, you know, super easy. So screen there, and that, that gives us the smoke, which gives us that kind of foreground element. Um, another thing I like to do is to incorporate the background into the foreground and have it kind of work with the player. And so I've already got these flares coming off of these lights here. There is a light back there, but it was not flaring uh, in the original image. But what I like to do is kind of bring things over the uniform, which kind of, you know, brings him, it kind of sucks him into the background in a certain way and maybe brings a little bit of a realism to him. Um, there and again, flares, you can, I think I um, have a folder of these as well. This one actually had some color coming off of it, which I adjusted with some hue and saturation, also adjusted the flare itself. You can see when I undo uh, these two layers. These um, adjustment layers on top of these layers, I mean, it's just a really powerful tool to dial in uh, certain effects to, so they're basically custom for um, the palette that you're using, kind of the color palette on some of these images. So we've got that element there over this shoulder, um, which kind of, you know, brings him back into the background, envelops him somewhat. And then I added another little flare here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see both of these. And so then I just uh, accentuated this light kind of coming off of his helmet here. You know, we've got that other, those other flares going on. So and this is just kind of adding just a little bit of a creative touch that still makes sense um, you know, within this image. And then here you can kind of see what I'm talking about with this flare here, where I bring the flares over his uniform in a manner that, you know, if you're taking this and that light was kind of directed at your camera, it could easily kind of flare your lens a little bit and, and bring that over. Just another cool element to kind of um, round out this this image and sell the uh, composite for, for what it is. All right, and then from there, we did those two flare, another, you know, this flare up here, I also had color corrected to uh, match what was going on with the scene, with these huge saturation um, layers. Uh, this is a high pass. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. So right here, this is what would be a high pass set to soft light. And this is probably a two pixel high pass, um, which just gives an, an edge sharpness. Turn that on and off, you can kind of see that. So that's just like a micro sharpening that I like to do um, to these images. And then along with that, sometimes I will do another high pass. Uh, and this one is gonna be, let me back out. This one is probably gonna be around 59 pixels. For some reason, I've kind of found that that seems to work for me. And this just add, it adds that um, contrast, um, localized kind of micro contrast, I guess. You can adjust it with the opacity, so we could slide this up to 100%, which I think is, is too much for this image. And you know, that might work for some. Rarely do I find 100% works for that. So I've brought that for this image down to, I think, like 50%. So it just gives that extra little bump. And sometimes I will just keep that on the player and I will mask out what that does to the background. On this image, I left it as is. So it, gets to, it gives that kind of bump to the background too, which helps these flares uh, and gives a little more texture um, to these rafters and things that are going on at the top part of this image here. Okay, and so right here, this is a luminosity mask. This could be a tutorial in itself. Uh, this is an expanded midtones one. There are a set of actions that um, I can maybe link to in the description. But I've got uh, this the midtones. Uh, you know, I can pull in the uh, highlights and the uh, darks. But basically, what this does is makes a selection. Um, 
of uh, mid-tone values, even this mass is kind of hard to uh, make sense of. What I do here is then I, I bring this in and basically just with a curves adjustment, I will slide in the darks and then bring across the highlights. So what it does is just gives me that extra little little bump, um, you know, kind of cutting out any any extra haze and then bringing the whites to more of a true white and the blacks to more of a true black. So I'm I'm bringing um, bringing those in, making it a tighter tighter image along this histogram here. Also with these luminosity masks, I always uh, set the blend mode to luminosity. If you have it on uh, normal, you can kind of see that it affects the color, the saturation, and I prefer to control that with uh, my you know, color layers, which you'll see next. So let me go back, put that back to uh, luminosity. So at luminosity, it doesn't affect um, the color at all. And then uh, color grade, I use uh, color balance on this image. And let me go up here and I can show in the uh, shadows, I brought in some more cyan and some blue values. I think I left the midtones as they are. Yep. And then in the highlights, I brought up the uh, the yellows a little bit in the highlights. So I don't know. For this image, it kind of gives it more of a uh, cinematic, I guess, feel. And I removed some of the uh, magenta, but you know, for the hurricanes, that could work. You know, you can leave that magenta in just because it goes with. Um, the team colors that they have, but um, for my own personal sake, I just kind of went in this direction. All right, so I'm just gonna run down, uh, show you. We'll just turn these off. Oops, and go back to that one, that one. And we'll quickly put this back together. And so once again, we started, um, gave a Put a field blur on the background, darkened the uh, lower part of the background, kind of darkened some other areas around the background. Took out the news sign, then came over the top with the dodge and burn on these uh, screen layers, 50% gray screen layers. Brought in a little bit of smoke. Added this flare over his left shoulder. Added a little flare to his helmet. Uh, a 2%, 2-pixel two uh, high pass for sharpening, a 59% or uh, 59 pixel um, high pass set to soft light uh, at 50% and a luminosity mask um, enhance or masking out the mid-tone values for this image and then tightening those up. And then our color grade that I used for this image. So that basically uh, sums up exactly what I did with the, this image here. And I like to say it, it, it really, the, the foundation of these images is, you know, a strong image of the actual athlete. So from there, everything else is pretty much dressing. And when teams, uh, companies hire me, I like to think that that's why they, they hire me is because I deliver these types of images for them which in turn makes it easy or easier for their design teams to uh, put together images for their graphics and advertisements and that type of thing. So before you want to uh, you know, focus on throwing a bunch of effects on an image, I think it comes down to actually capturing the elements, which um, you know, the player here in camera uh, at, at a proper way that um, allows for this to kind of make everything work from there. All right, well, I hope some of y'all found this interesting. This is the first time I've done something like this, so I'll probably go back, check the tape, and see how I can do it better in the future. But just to sum up, you can see I really didn't have to do a whole lot with this image since most of the hard work was taken care of during the photo shoot itself. I also wanna thank all of you who have sent messages about wanting to see this. It's a pretty uncertain time we're all going through right now. So I've really enjoyed the back and forth. I kind of feel like this YouTube channel is a bit of a creative lifeline for me right now. So I really appreciate all the feedback. And in saying that, I do read all your messages and try to respond to them all. It's not, actually not that hard with the low follower count I have, although it seems to be growing. So thank you to those of you who have pushed that subscribe button in the past couple weeks. 
Okay, if you want this print, make sure you're following me and drop that comment below. While you're doing that, take the opportunity to let me know if there's something else you'd like to see in the future. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at Quants Photo. This has been kind of fun. I think um, we might have hopefully learned something here. And I will be here in the next one. Mm -hmm.